Hi, Hi guys. guys, welcome, welcome to, to NYC. NYC. Well, it is Friday night, um, and it is the day after Thanksgiving, and we're back in the city, and we decided, hey, it's a good time to go out and get a drink. We were inside all day today and yesterday, so we're both in the mood to go out and do something fun. Yeah. And, um, well, <clears throat> we decided to, uh, continue with the, the speakeasy trend, tr crossing our one off our very long list, and go to a place called... Employees, Employees Only. only. <laughs> I don't know why we so, said it at the same time. <laughs> we, me neither. But, so this summer, we watched a really neat documentary about the, the uh, very best cocktail bars and some speakeasies around the world. So some in London, Tokyo, and then, of course, right here in New York City. Yep, and... Um, one of the ones that was highlighted in that, that documentary was Employees Only. And um, the neat thing about this place is that, um, in addition to having obviously amazing cocktails, is that the, the name Employees Only comes from the, 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 the sense that um, there's no uh, one owner like a, a bank or something like that. They said basically all the, the, employee, the, owner, all the owners are employees, they all work there. And so the idea that basically everyone is kind of equal to some extent um, and everyone kind of wears coats that almost sort of look like lab coats with their names and there's a few different levels that um, they work they work up and they're trained by the other employees there um, so like so they over a course of a few years so anyway we're excited to go and uh, check it out for ourselves and um, we're gonna head out in a few minutes and we'll catch you there see you soon So we finally made it, employees only, it's absolutely packed in here. I'm in the bathroom, very fast because there's a line. Uh, there's not much to see in here except there are some very, shall we say, lewd photos lining the walls. Um, I'm not going to do a close-up because it wouldn't be fit to print, so to speak. So, uh, other than that, pretty normal bathroom and a tiny little sink. It's a uh, it's salt with ground up um, salted chapulín. Exactly. It's salt with ground up grasshoppers. No what? way! Yeah, oh, it's like a red salt, and it's like very smoky, um, flavorful. It's almost like bacon salt. I've seen the but, red salt. Wow. Bacon I, salt, but I, I would, I would, I would try that if it's ground up. Like, I you, think, like you wouldn't, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't just like pop one in my mouth. Like, but, it. but if it's ground up, I would eat. I would do it. But what? Why Actually, crickets? but they, yo, but um, in Mexico, it's a traditional thing. So like oh, in yeah. Mayan and Aztec cuisine. They ate crickets. crickets. So, um, what it, is the appeal? Like, is there protein in crickets? Like, why? So, um, if a cricket, when they prepare it, and you just buy like a, you have it whole, um, it's kind of, it's like a potato chip. It actually has very little flavor. Oh, it's mostly like a crunchy, salty thing. So, Mexicans love everything with lime and, and chile. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I anything. I was on the wrong verse. Uh, they messed up, man. Uh, it's a remix. 
Oh man, okay. Tell me why it ain't nothing but a lie. Oh yeah, we're gonna say. Tell me why it ain't nothing but a lie. Oh yeah, we're gonna say. Oh yeah, we're gonna say. Oh yeah, we're gonna Hi guys, one of us is cold. Please guess who? <laughs> Comment below. <laughs> all in all, it was a successful night. Laura's had a few too many, which is a funny statement to make because she only had two drinks. Um, so, anyway, um, we're back from employees only. It was interesting. <laughs> Uh, it's a nice PC way of putting it. I mean, first of all, let's you know get the the important stuff out of the way first. <laughs> Lauren finds everything amusing. Um, let's get the important stuff out of the way first. It, it is a cool place. <laughs> He's Louise. It's a cool place. Uh, the drinks are very good, as you might expect. Delicious. <laughs> Um, I had two drinks. Me too. I um, also had two drinks. <laughs> we had two drinks, but it seems like she had about five. The first one I had was um, called the Ready Fire Aim. So a bit of uh, putting the cart before the horse. And um, it was... <laughs> <laughs> and they had... It was a mezcal-based drink, which was delicious. <laughs> um, and it also had a honey and pineapple flavors mixed in. So it was like... Basically, a little good mix of everything. It was, um, it was uh, sweet and citrusy. <laughs> um, it had that nice honey flavor in there. It was um, smoky, and it also had a little spice in there too. So it was a little perfect mix of everything. Delicious. Um, the second one I had was called the Monkey Business, and it was more of a Scotch-based drink. It had bananas in it as well. <laughs> bananas, uh, hence monkey. Um, uh, bananas, <laughs> scotch. Hence the um, business. <laughs> and some more stuff. So those were my two. Um, I'm not sure if Laura is coherent enough to remember her two drinks. Um, so I maybe. Do. <laughs> well, folks, if you like the apothecary video, this is this is a part two of that. I'm sure I about. do. Okay, yeah. I don't remember the names of mine, but I do remember. One was called. <laughs> hang on, hang on. The Don Quixote, I think. It was close to that. And that one had passion fruit in it. And then the other one that I had was a honeysuckle drink. Both drinks were very good. We did have to wait a little bit in line to get in. Um, about a half an hour to about 45 About a half minutes. hour. The odd part, uh, about a half, it was about a half hour. The The funny part was the line moved very quickly until we're we, until basically up to us and then suddenly stopped. Uh, so the people in front of us got in like five minutes and then we had to wait um, yeah, close to a half true. hour. Yeah. Um, which we struck up a conversation <clears throat> with two very lovely people behind us in line. We did. Um, <laughs> Ansel so it and the Emily. Fly by. And they're visiting from um, Florida. Fort Lauderdale. No, no, West Palm Beach. Yep. And um, they were they were great. We talked to them, and then we also hung out with them and talked to them when we got inside, so we made some friends, which was always good. Yeah. Um, and the place is cool itself. I mean, it's kind of a, it is uh, a speakeasy to some extent. The outside is unmarked. It just has the employees only symbol, which is this. Um, but uh, it and actually- And psychic in the window too. But this actually looks like, um, you can see the E and the O, but it actually, when you see it on the sign, it's actually like this, which doesn't really look like, well, to me, it looks kind of like a key. Uh, actually, this is like the key. It looks like this. So um, that's that's what you see on the um, in the front, but you don't actually see a, um, there's no like lettering employees only, and then there's just a uh, neon in the window that says psychic, and there actually is a psychic uh, sitting in the front if you want to get your fortune uh, read or told, which is cool. And then the um, the place itself is a beautiful bar. Dimly lit, candles. Um, I don't know, hard to explain. There was like, 
neat like uh, patterns of light going around the ceiling. Uh, just really cool, you'll see it in the footage. And um, it was it was packed. I mean, we went out, it's a Friday night, so we figured maybe, and it's the day after, being the day after Thanksgiving, we thought it may be a little bit less crowded, but it was packed to the gills. I mean, like there wasn't even much place to, to stand, let alone sit. Um, <laughs> But, you know, we, we had a good time. We hung out. We had our, our, had two drinks each. Made some good friends along the way, which is all, what it's all about. The only recommendation would be to not go on a Friday or Saturday because being that it is a popular place and that it was listed one of the best cocktail bars in the city from numerous places, a lot of people are going to go there. It would be best to go on an off night, like a Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Sunday, that kind of thing. Um, but when you do go, you'll be rewarded with um, some really amazing drinks and just a really cool place to sit and, and pass the time. Have a good night, guys. Good night. We'll see you soon.